while solution mode does not have a guided workflow like the watertight geometry workflow, you can use the ribbon layout and the ribbon tabs to guide your workflow. So you've already seen the ribbon before, and this kind of layout will be familiar because it's also used by SpaceClaim. It's designed to help guide you through the steps of defining your simulation, calculating the solution, and viewing the results. And the basic idea is that you can simply work through the various tabs going from left to right. In particular, most simulations involve the Domain tab, the Physics tab, the Solution tab, and finally, the Results tab. Fluent is flexible, and you don't have to define things in any particular order. But when you're just getting started, and maybe not yet very familiar with the user interface, if you remember to work through these four tabs from left to right, it can help prevent you from overlooking things. First, I want to talk about the user interface, because it has many useful features that everyone should know about. I will start with the graphics window. You can right-click on the top of the window and switch between the tab view and subwindow view. You can also right-click and open new windows. Windows can be resized and repositioned within the workspace. If you want to go back to tab view, you can do that. There's also a full screen view. And if you want to exit full screen view, just right click at the top of the screen and choose full screen again, and that will get you back to the regular view. There's an option to copy the contents of the window to a clipboard. So for instance, if you wanted to use this image in a PowerPoint presentation, just copy it to the clipboard and then paste it in your presentation. There's no need to save a picture first or use Windows Stip tool or anything like that. You can just copy and paste. You might have noticed that in all of the various pieces or elements of the user interface, there are these arrows that allow you to collapse a view. And what this does is it allows you to make the graphics area take up a larger portion of the real estate inside the Fluent window. And if you're working like this, and you need to work in one of the panels that's collapsed, just go over here and click it to bring it back. And then you can make changes, and once you're finished, just click the arrow again. I don't always work like this with everything collapsed, but it is a nice option, and I do want everyone to know that it's there. The next thing I want to talk about is the Graphics Windows toolbars. You can see there are a number of icons around the outside of the graphics window, which are grouped in toolbars. One feature of these icons that I find to be very useful, because I can never remember what every last one is for, is that if you hover the mouse over the icon, a bubble text will tell you what the icon does. In the first group of icons on the left, there's an option to bring up the mesh display panel. It is the same thing as display mesh in the ribbon. It allows you to control the mesh display options and select which surfaces to display. There is a button to make the front faces transparent and that can be useful if you're working with a complex model. It allows you to more easily see what's inside. So I will go ahead and do that, and then I can see through the wall. The next group of icons on the left controls the functions of the left mouse button. Right now it is set so that the left mouse button box selects, but if I want to, I can change it to pan, or to zoom, or whatever I want it to do. There's an option here that says print information about selected item. And what that does is, if I activate it and select something in the graphics window, Fluent prints out some information in the console window about what was selected. I normally don't use these. Most of the time, I just like to leave the left mouse button setting as box select because all of the other functions here are already assigned to other mouse buttons. And so now, getting back to the graphics toolbars, there's an option to toggle between orthographic view and perspective view. The default view setting in Fluent is perspective view, but there's also an orthographic view, and this is easier to see if I orient the view along an axis. So there's perspective, and then there's orthographic. 
One thing you can do in orthographic mode is you have the option to display a ruler at the bottom of the screen. And this is sometimes helpful to give you a sense of what the dimensions are in the model you're working with. And that could be the overall dimensions or also the local dimensions of different parts of the model. Normally I work in perspective view though, unless I need the ruler. So I'll just set it back. There's also an option to scale to fit, an option to go back to the last view and the one before that and the one before that. And you can go forward too. There are options to control the view vector, although I usually find that it's easier to use the triad to do that. So I will skip these here. On the right, there are options for some of the graphics features. So you can turn reflections on and off, and you can do the same with shadows and with the grid plane. There are options for showing and hiding surfaces. I can select a surface by left clicking it and then use the hide selected surfaces button. And then I can use the show all surfaces button. There's also an option for deselecting surfaces. I normally use the right click context menus to do these operations though. So if I select the manifold wall again and then right click, I can hide it. And then if I right click again in an empty area of the window, I can show all. You can also control the visibility of the triad on or off. The triad is intuitive. As you might guess, if you click an axis, the view is aligned with that axis. If you wanted to use the opposite of the axis, just click again. There's also an isometric view icon and the arrows will rotate the view 90 degrees around the view vector. You've already seen the ruler option. If you click here, it will automatically change to orthographic view. And then if you want, you can change back to perspective view from the left-hand toolbar. There's an option to display a title area in graphics. And there is also an option to control the visibility of the boundary markers. Finally, there's an option to copy the graphics display to clipboard. So you can either copy to clipboard from the right click menu at the top of the graphics window, or use the icon here. Either way, it does the exact same thing. You can save pictures and graphics, and this is an alternative to copying to the clipboard. And there are a variety of picture formats available. You can also right click in the graphics window and choose save picture. Either way is identical. You can see there's a filter option here in the lower right corner, and I want to explain how that works. To start off with, if you left click on a surface in the graphics in Fluent, it will be selected. Once it's been selected, it will turn green, and then you can right click and perform operations on it. Or in the right click menu, you can also clear it from being selected. You've also noticed that a boundary conditions entry display appears whenever a surface has been selected. But right here, that's not the main point. So let me just right click and clear the selection. Now I can also select multiple surfaces by using box select. Remember the default function for the left mouse button is box select. And the way that box select works is if I click and drag with the left mouse button, if I go from upper left to lower right, it will select everything that is completely inside the box. In this case, that is these two pressure outlets. This is called exclusive selection, meaning that anything that's not completely within the box is excluded. Now with box select, if instead I click and drag in the opposite direction, Fluent will select everything that touches the box and this is called inclusive selection. Everything is included. So now in addition to the two outlets, the wall is also selected. And if you rotate, you can see that the other outlet and the inlet, which were not touching the box when I drew it, are not selected. So finally, all of this brings me to the filter in the lower right. By default, it is set to all. So all surfaces in the box selection group will be selected but I can change the filter 
to only select certain kinds of surfaces. So if I change to pressure outlet and do the same inclusive selection as before, now only the pressure outlet surfaces are selected. So there are two things here that are useful. First, box selection is possible in the graphics window, and that selection can be inclusive or exclusive depending on the direction of the box. And second, you can use the filter in the lower right corner of the graphics window to select with more precision. The filter also works for selection of single entities by left clicking, but I find that it's most useful for box selection. One last thing about graphics toolbars, and I never do this myself, but it might be useful to know. You can see at some places in the toolbar, there's this little spacer symbol, for lack of a better term. And if you click, you can drag each of the toolbars for the various icon sets and move them to different positions around the border of the graphics window. So that was the graphics window toolbars. One of the things you might have noticed as I've been performing various operations is that right clicking in a blank area of the graphics window results in a context menu. The options in the context menu depend on where you right click. If I select this and right click, I get one kind of context menu. And if I right click on a blank area of the screen, I get a different kind of context menu. The point is, these context menus can be useful in certain conditions. And so when you're working on your own models, go ahead and right click in different places and start getting familiar with the different kinds of options that are available in the context menus. And sure, while the menu options might be available from other places in the ribbon or the outline view, often I find it to be fast and convenient to be able to access the command that I want to do from right in the graphics window. In this video, you've seen how the ribbon can be used to guide your workflow in fluent solution mode. Begin on the left with the domain tab and then work your way from left to right through the physics, solution, and results tabs. You've also seen various ways to modify the fluent window including rearranging items in the graphics layout. And so, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching.